Hello there, it's Fridays with Father. It is November the 6th. I'm happy to be with you here. Um, we started doing this Fridays with Father, at least with me, um, uh, a couple of years ago now uh, during the pandemic. And the main purpose really uh, for Fridays with Father was to, you know, reach out uh, to people, um, to help them feel connected uh, during the difficult times of the pandemic. Um, and let's face it, it was difficult, especially when, you know, we couldn't go out and there was a great deal of fear, you know, remember, remember those times when, you know, you'd come back from the grocery store and you'd be washing your groceries. I think most people did that once or twice and then abandoned it. But there was, you know, it was extreme times, times of crisis. And so uh, Fridays with Father was a way to, like, I suppose, help people feel uh, not alone uh, and uh, or disconnected from the church um, and so I, I hope that has helped in some ways um, now I suppose we could argue that the pandemic is over so um, why are we doing this and uh, I continue to do this because I think that you know there's part of us that always needs to feel connected or to be reminded that we're not alone in, in anything that we experience you know and to be able to take time uh, to remind ourselves of that, you know, and if we are Christ's church and Jesus is with us in all things, um, to have that reminder once in a while or actually kind of regularly that um, we're not alone um, is an important thing. I mean, because there are some people I know, um, at least in, in this parish, who are um, who physically are alone and um and then there are other people who feel very isolated emotionally from themselves or from other people. Um, but so Fridays with Father, I think, uh, continues to be its its little mission, if you like, is is a way of reaching out and to let people know um, that uh, Jesus welcomes us to be a part of his life. Uh, and that's a beautiful thing. And it's a great gift and a great privilege. And, and we want you to share in that. And just to take this time each week, you know, just to reflect on that or to be aware of that or to be reminded of it, um, I, I think is a healthy uh, practice for each one of us. So, um, so we're continuing to do Fridays with Father because of that reason, um, pandemic or no pandemic, um, we all need, I think, to be grounded uh, regularly and to be reminded of who we are, uh, who made us, uh, and who is the person who is constantly there for us in our lives. Uh, and that's the person of Jesus. You know, at least that's how I experience uh, my faith um, here with you all at Church of the Holy Spirit. So um, you're welcome to be with us. And I'm happy if you're tuning in. I don't think people tune into anything anymore, but if you're connecting with us through Fridays with Father, because it's a way um, to be drawn in uh, to Jesus, really, to, to come closer to him. Uh, welcome is important, you know. Um, we can talk about, you know, hospitality till the cows come home, um, but uh, and how, you know, sincere welcomes are. Um, but it is important for you to know um, that Jesus, I think, is the, always the host. Uh, uh, he is the one who welcomes us all into his life, into his soul, into his heart, and that his life, his story, if you like, is what gives us uh, the meaning uh, and the strength uh, to continue uh, very often uh, and to celebrate life with great joy. So um, welcome to Fridays with Father for that reason, if no other. Uh, and talking about welcomes, I suppose, um, I, I just want to say a slight aside is that, you know, every week when I come to Fridays with Father, I'm thinking, what on earth am I going to talk about? You know, I've been doing this for like a number of years now. I have nothing to say. And I've always said, you know, I have nothing to say really. But when it comes down to it and I have to say something, it, something pops up, you know, and as I'm thinking about welcoming and, and how Jesus is the one who welcomes us all. He's the big host in our life because he's what our life, our, what he is what our life is all about. 
Um, so I, I recall an experience I had when I was in seminary, which I told some of you about uh, last week when I was at Mass, and um, which kind of tickled me because I'd, I'd forgotten about it. But it, it's, it, it's, uh, it's kind of poignant, I suppose, really. It, you know, as I've told you before, um, my seminary formation was quite strict. Um, we were about 40 young men in, in a formation community in the middle of Spain. And, um, you know, I went when I was 19, so we knew nothing about life or anything. So we lived very strict by the rules within the formation community. And, um, you know, and I don't regret any of it because it's made me the person that I am now. Um, so it didn't do me any harm. Uh, but we celebrated there. It wasn't, you know, it, we had fun in spite of there being a lot of rules. And we were allowed to have... Uh, celebration like parties for specific birthdays uh, mainly uh, for us at that age we we were allowed to have a party when we we turned 21 uh, and so that was like the, the big thing you know and I turned 21 when I was in seminary too um, so I suppose most people now celebrate 18 right but anyway but uh, when we were 21 we, we were allowed to have this party and you got to choose who was on the guest list now, you would have thought, right, being like a, a sort of Christian kind of Catholic community that everybody would have been invited. Oh, no, but no, not everybody was invited. You got to choose who actually came to the celebration. It was usually in a restaurant. Um, so I remember having mine. You know, it was it was no big shakes, but I mean, it was seemed important at the time. But I was also invited to different other, you know, other people's uh, 21st birthdays. Uh, on this one occasion, what I remember happening, um, I was invited by this one guy who didn't go on to become a priest, um, but he he organized his 21st birthday party and he invited me, which I was happy to accept the invitation. Anyway, three days three days before or so, uh, the, the, the party itself, uh, knock, knock, knock on my door, and in walked this guy and, and he said to me, he said, you know, uh, I invited you to my party uh, next week. Um, well, I've come to tell you that uh, you're no longer invited. <laughs> I said, oh, okay, thank you. And he left the room. So, you know, I've been invited to this party. It's hilarious now when I think about it. And then I was uninvited, you know. Um, I have no idea to this day what happened. But I suppose whether I'd offended him or I'd said the wrong thing or maybe I was friends with the wrong people or I just, you know, um, you know, they, he wanted somebody else to go instead of me. I don't know. But anyway, I'd received an invitation and then it was rescinded. It was taken away, you know. So um, um, I didn't feel great about that at the time. I can laugh about it now. Um, I think I was a bit angry at this also for a while. But um, it, it just taught me, I suppose, about human nature uh, as it is, is that, you know, um, uh, we can go in and out of popularity <laughs> quite quickly. I mean, and, and very often we can offend people without even knowing it. And, and sometimes we can go off people, right? Um, you can like one person one day and then you may not like them the next, you know. Um, and I think that's, you know, what, what happened with being uninvited uh, to a party and, and you think when you think about it you think well I mean um, what's what's it all about you know if, if that this is the church and this was a Christian community how could such a thing happen you know and and I learned to get over that really and and because uh, it's happened to me since but I mean um, I, I think the important thing I learned from that was that you know, human beings were, were fickle. Uh, human beings, we are weak and vulnerable. And we're very, we, we change you know, our minds. We're not very, you know, reliable. From, <laughs> But I suppose uh, the welcome, I suppose, that we need in life and the encouragement we need in life and the invitation we need in life is from Jesus himself. And that's what's important. So even when, you know, uh, the seminary isn't welcoming, uh, Jesus is the one who welcomes you. Uh, when there is a church that's not welcoming, um, the person who welcomes you is Jesus because it's him. He's the host always. 
and I, I found that helpful ever since. Because if I'm honest, you know, seminary, my experience in formation for a priest, seminaries are not welcoming. Um, the professors uh, were hard, they were very cold, and at times very unfeeling. So you never felt welcome in, in that place. You always felt like you were on the verge of being kicked out. <laughs> Seriously. You know, so you never got a welcome there. So I, I, now I think I'm not surprised that I, had a, I was uninvited to a party. Um, but what kept me there was the welcome from Jesus. So it was my relationship with him. Um, that kept me there, that kept me connected. Uh, and I think that's important. Um, we, we, we see a lot of people who, um, who leave communities or who don't come back to a certain church because they don't feel welcome or they've had a bad experience or, you know, or somebody's, you know, uninvited them <laughs> to something or they, they felt like um, offended in one way or another and the most human thing in the world is to say is to shake the dust off and say well you know I'm not going there again you know um, uh, and that's perfectly understandable and that's perfectly human um, but for me um, what's kept me in place and keeps me in place in spite of the many kickbacks uh, and the rejections you might find in the church uh, and they do exist because we're a human church um, what keeps me here is the welcome that Jesus gives us uh, and that's the welcome from Jesus at the altar that's the welcome that Jesus gives us in in his word um, you know and, and that's what uh, keeps me afloat and keeps a smile on my face so I share that with you today just in case you've had similar experiences to me um, maybe you've been uninvited uh, <laughs> to a party or maybe you've uh, come across you know a parish community that uh, hasn't made you feel welcome you know really uh, and my point is I understand and I know um, how it is and it's hurtful um, but the welcome the real real deep welcome is from Jesus himself and what matters is your relationship with him um, and, and the rest of the stuff is just human you know uh, the church the Catholic Church itself I mean there's bits of it none of us really like you know bits of it none of us really get and um, bits of it we don't really approve of you know um, but it's a, a church which is made up of human people uh, characters with foibles and flaws and weaknesses and and struggles and you know, but in the middle of all that, in the middle of all the mess, there's Jesus there who welcomes us and says, come be with me. Come be a part of my life, you know. Be connected with me, you know. Allow me to make a difference in your life and find the joy that that brings. And um, uh, for that reason, uh, you know, we get up, or at least I get up in the morning and, and I do what I do. And for that reason, I'm here today sharing with you on Fridays with Father because um, my faith is in Christ and, uh, and he is always there to welcome me, uh, even when I'm not at my best or even when I fall or when I make mistakes or, or I offend people. Um, it's we're human beings uh, and Jesus is there. In the middle of it all and he's the light you know so he brings us the joy so I just wanted to share with you that because um, um, because I, I, I think we you know we all have those kind of human experiences um, that we don't know how to deal with and it, it's easy to get you know um, kind of like bitter or you know take it too much to heart um, the person who's able to cut through all of the, the human kind of like hurt and distress and the confusion is Jesus himself. He's the light, you know, he, he makes it right. So uh, as I say, he's the one who kept me in seminary. He's the one that keeps me in the church. He's the one that keeps me in this parish. And, and I don't mind too much, well, maybe I do, um, being uninvited <laughs> to a party. Uh, to be honest, I'm not a big party goer anyway, but... Um, but it, it's him, you know, it's, it's about him always. Um, he is the joy. So I just share that with you today. Um, 
so uh, the other thing I was going to say to you today was, um, you know, what is the joy uh, for me this week? And the joy for me this week is rediscovering, I suppose, uh, Jesus in, in one of um, the Bible uh, books that I'd kind of forgotten about. I'm not so much forgotten about, but I'd, you know, it's just been there in the, 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 the recesses of my mind. And and it came as I was celebrating uh, Mass earlier in the week, and the reading was from um, St. Paul's letter to the Philippians. And they just gave this reading, and I thought to myself, huh, you know, I'd, I'd forgotten, uh, uh, forgotten about Philippians. And, um, and it was always one of my favorite ones, and it was always a, a passage in there that I would, you know, choose as like my favorite Bible passage. And for some time, it's kind of like drifted away from my awareness. The joy is, is allowing, I suppose, Jesus to bring this back into focus for me and, um, and to find it again. And so, you know, this past week, I've been reading St. Paul's letter to the Philippians. And um, there's a couple of lovely passages in it. I just, I just wanted to draw your attention to. Uh, if you get a chance to read uh, St. Paul's letter to the Philippians, um, it's not very long. That's an easy one, right? Um, it's not very long, and it's got some very nice bits in it. Um, there's lots about gratitude and joy, and most especially, I suppose, what I what I really like about it, and I, that's the the bit that sort of to be reminded was, is that is that Saint Paul talks about Jesus, you know. That's what it is. He talks about Jesus, and that is my joy, that he talks to us about Jesus. And there's a passage in St. Paul's letter to the Philippians, um, which is commonly known as the kenosis. And it tells us, you know, um, how Jesus, what Jesus gave up in order to undergo everything he had to undergo. Um, it says that he, like, he emptied himself completely of his um, equality to God. Um, he emptied himself of his will. Um, he gave it all up in order to fulfill the mission that he came to the earth to fulfill. And, and that's called kenosis because it means like emptying. He emptied himself. And it's a very beautiful passage and you will know it. And it starts like his state was divine but he did not cling to his equality with God. And it's a passage which comes up regularly throughout the year in the church. Uh, and I, I share it with you today because it's absolutely gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Um, and I just want to sort of say, you know, he was in the form of God, but he did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself taking the form of a slave and when I first heard that when I was a teenager it kind of like hit me right there you know and I thought to myself whoa it, this it, this really touched my heart because I thought to myself you know Jesus was serious about this he really did this as a human being for us he emptied himself he put aside all of his you know his own desires his own wills his own ambitions he put it all aside just so that, you know, he could set us free, that he could give us something to look forward to, to give us a life. Uh, and, and I'm so grateful um, to, to St. Paul <laughs> for, for this uh, wonderful, wonderful letter to the Philippians. If you get a chance, read it. It's all about the emptying. And it's a great kind of, kind of spirituality point for each one of us. You know, in order to follow Jesus in some ways to a certain degree, we have to empty ourselves uh, of those things, really, which um, cloud our mind, cloud our judgment, uh, or can be obstacles, you know. Um, you know, selfishness, kind of like prejudices, you know. In order to be fully, you know, able to follow Jesus, you need to be free. Uh, and this emptying of ourselves. Uh, is what Jesus did. It's a very touching passage, and um, I, I commend uh, the letters to the Philippians to you today to take a look at. Um, in the the church's prayer, um, all priests and, and religious, we every Saturday afternoon, in fact, we pray this passage uh, from Philippians, 
about his state was divine, but he did not cling to equality with God. Rather, he emptied himself and took upon the form of a slave or a servant. Uh, see, I mean, it's they're there in the recesses of my mind, but the fact that it was brought again into my attention, I thought, ha, huh, that's that's wonderful, and and gave me joy. Put light in lightness in my step, a lightness in my soul, because I was reminded of this. And and the passage that we we read in the in uh, in mass that day from this book. Um, was not that passage. It was another one, um, which kind of made me chuckle, um, which I'll just bring to your attention, um, because it sort of says, it goes on and sort of says, well, if this means anything to you at all, you know, if you've got any faith, you know, if, you know, that everything that Jesus did for you, if that means anything to you at all, then please, you know, please follow a life, live a life which is worthy of it. But um, I always feel that like a, like a, um, it kind of touches me emotionally because it's like it's like pleading with you. It's like, well, if, if Jesus means anything to you, if anything He's done for you means anything to you at all, then then please, you know, change your life. Please, you know, don't be mean. <laughs> please, you know, say a prayer. You know, please, you know, be kind to people. Please forgive others. Please forgive yourself, etc., etc. Um, it's just a beautiful thing and it's almost like a love story it, it kind of reminds me of like those um you know those uh, r romantic uh movies that you see whereby you know sort of a couple meets and they fall in love but some one of them has got something in their past and that becomes apparent and then they split up but i mean but they can't you know deny that they love each other there's a split there and then finally there's a confrontation and then you know somehow somebody sort of says you know well well, if that meant, if, if, if it meant anything to us, to you at all, you know, what we experienced, uh, then you must know that we, 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 we should be together, you know, and eventually uh, there is this realization that, yeah, this means far more to me than I thought, and therefore, and then they end up happily ever after, you know, it's like one of those Nicholas Spark novels. Um, you know, where it, they always end up together because they realize that love overcomes everything. And um, and that's what what Philippians is kind of saying. You know, if this means anything to you at all, if anything you ever knew about Jesus Christ in life means anything, you know, sort of um, be with him. You know, turn your life around. Be with him, you know. That's, for me, a great cause of joy. A great cause of joy. That great love story, which is... Uh, Jesus' love for us and how that invitation, you know, that welcome um, to have love for him, you know, it's really what our lives are all about. Anyway, I've probably gone on a bit too long today, but I just wanted to share those few points with you. Uh, I commend to you St. Paul's letter to the Philippians and to remind you that uh, this evening we have Holy Hour in our church at 6.30. Uh, please come and spend time with us uh, in before Jesus' presence and in silence uh, with a bit of reflective music at times, but also that option too to, um, to raise your prayers um, in the form of petitions. And you can submit petitions online and I will raise them um, before Jesus in prayer tonight, um, whether you can be here or not. Um, but we have Holy Hour and that's a beautiful time uh, to come to Jesus and to know that you are welcome with him. Um, and that's about it, I think, really. Um, I'm on Mass at 8 o'clock on Sunday morning and 12 noon in Spanish. Uh, I look forward to seeing some of you then. In the meantime, be joyful. Keep the faith. I think I'm going to get some more coffee. Cheers. <laughs>